All right, so the meat of today is actually gonna be spent on dashboards. And I'm gonna create a bunch of custom dashboards here, which I'm really excited for. So hopefully you all are familiar with Discover, but if not, I'm just gonna give a quick recap. With Discover, we can more or less perform any query against any of the data. So here I'm just viewing all of the events. I can drill down into any subset of this. I can then define any of the data that I'm uh, interested in, whether it's you know customer type, into how many errors are happening to each of these or events. But what we didn't have is the ability to visualize this all in one place, all in different formats. So Discover allows you to find any of these answers and hit our API, grab any of the data, pivot on this, and figure out what was going on. But what happens if you wanted to see this in a bar format or a map format or have multiple Discover queries all on the same page and know all this stuff. So that's where dashboards comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and create a bunch of different dashboards. It's going to look like this in the end, but let me go through the whole flow. So if we go into dashboards, we can go ahead, create the dashboard. So I'm just going to say Neil webinar errors, and let's go ahead and start creating some widgets here. So first thing, I'm going to create three big numbers just so I can understand the state of things from a high level. So let's start with total errors. And this is just going to be the overall count of errors. Very basic here. Next one, we'll do another big number. Let's start with the total unique issues, right? So we can go here, count unique. Let's go ahead and select the issue. There we go. One more big number which is users affected. And you can see how easily I'm doing this here. Put the name. That one is important. Alrighty. And let's keep going here. So I'm interested here in unhandled and handled errors, right? So let's go ahead. I want to view this in line chart. And we're going to go ahead and go handle yes, and then handle no. All righty. And there we go. Just like that. Add widget. And let's do a map next. Alrighty, so you can see all the different options here. I'm going to choose a map, and I actually just want to know errors on this map, right? So errors by geo. You can see my data set isn't too extensive here, but it looks like there's a compromised experience in the US. And this one is very interesting that I'm going to go do a bar graph, but let's see the number of releases that we have versus the unique issues that are introduced over time. So this is, you know, I put a release out there, how many new errors are coming out, and I would be interested in this as, as just more or less understanding delta into the system here. So let's go here into a bar chart. There we go. So my query is going to be, give me a second here. I'm just going to not include any transactions. Default here. All right. And then let's do a couple things here. So count unique of release, there we go, and then account unique of issues. There we go. So now what we can see is over the last 24 hours, there were, I'm gonna stop here for a second. There are three releases and 19 uh, issues introduced. And then there are four releases as well on this day and 19 issues introduced there. Let's keep going here. I'm going to get, uh, create a couple of uh, tables as well. So edit this dashboard. I'm interested in what my top issues are across all of my projects. So bam, table. Let's just do issue and count. We can add anything as necessary. I'm just going to keep it basic so that we just see the data as widget and the pertinent data is surfaced. And let's add a couple more tables here. The next one, let's do errors by customer type. I know this is taking a little bit, but we're going to have a really nice dashboard after this. And here I have a custom type or a custom tag. 
customer, right? Yeah. And here we go. And we'll do sort by count descending because we want to know. And so I can do that because I can see a little black hit for hit tree there. So there we go. And then next, errors by browser. So compromise a browser experience. And we can just say as browser doesn't mean. And let's go ahead and do table once again. Browser name. Here we go. And once again, sort. Here we go. So bam. So now we have a fully functional dashboard. And if I want to investigate a spike, let's say, for example, this, I can just go into this, see exactly what was going on, who's how many users are affected, unique issues, what oh, looks like I forgot to sort this one. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Sort by sending. What my most pertinent issues are over here. And if I compromise any of my enterprise experiences such, uh, I can act on it and go from there. So as, as easy as that, just a few clicks, I have a, a, a tile of uh, nine tiles here in a dashboard, all different types of visualizations from big numbers to line graphs to a map here. I can do bar graphs and tables. And something interesting about tables is this will take me to discover. I can then jot this down. Let's just go ahead. And now, for example, I'm interested in setting an alert for my enterprise users. So let me just go ahead and when, oh, got to select a project, that's easy. And let's just select an event type. What I'm going to do now is create an alert such that when errors happen to enterprise users, I'm then alerted. And my dashboard helped me easily hook in from da uh, dashboard to discover. And now you're going to see, oh, from one project. That again. There we go. And now we can go ahead and set a metric alert so that we're proactively alerted about this here in this case. So here, let's say if it goes to 12, I want it to go to critical. Let's say I have warning, and let's say we solve this one here. Form actions. So let's go ahead and do a few things. Let's select uh, do an email to my team. Go ahead and reach out to to pager duty as well, because this is probably pretty serious because this is enterprise customers, they're paying me big money. I then want to be paged and have an incident. And lastly, we can also do Slack and any of the such things that we're interested in as well. So go out to the urgent Slack channel as well. Keep that heavy. <laughs> there we go. You can go ahead and save this rule as easy as that. And go ahead and view any of this here. Look what we did say. Compromised, bam. And this would be the alert when it triggers. We can see everything as well as the related issues. So just a quick shout out to alerts here as well. And then to close the loop as well, if I wanted to create an issue alert, I could easily just go into here, bam, and also do customer type enterprise, right? I'm not going to go all the way through with this here. Then this is also one of our interesting things as well. We can go ahead and create an automatic Jira issue as well. So now, just to kind of tie everything together, right? I started here. I have a new dashboard that I created here. Is this? And from here, I can then jump into discover, set an alert, and go on. But the big point is I know exactly what's going on, all my different metrics. So I'm not I'm hopping over between issues, performance, discover, releases, et cetera. This is a good launching pad in addition to, to the project details that, that uh, we structured for you all as well. And, and we can dig down in from there. I'm going to go ahead and create one more dashboard because Sentry is not just about errors, right? We have performance, we have transactions, all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and go through that use case as well. So same thing here. Go ahead and create the dashboard. Let's title it. Let's 
Alrighty. And I'm going to start with kind of the same format because I like doing the big numbers first. So let's see just unique users actually on, on the system. So bam, here we go. And we can just call this unique users. Go ahead and add that widget. I'm going to do two more of these as well. The next one being my page load. And I'm going to do it in a P95 because that's the metric I'm interested in. So what I'm going to do here is figure out the transactions that I care about. So transaction and transact or transaction. Right here. And let's do a P95 of the transaction duration. And I'll get into web vitals in just a bit as well. But here I'm interested in specifically this metric right here. And average LCP load right into because it's not just about how long the end end was, but how long did it take for, for uh, the user to be able to interact with the page, etc. So let's start with the big number here. And what we're going to do here is measure uh, we're going to do an average of the LCP. There we go. Bam. So this is what we got so far. Let's just check it out. And next, let's create some line graphs uh, over web vitals, slow transactions, key transactions, and then we'll do one more map. So four more tiles, and then we'll call it a day here. So bam, next one, let's do a line chart. What I'm going to do is call this web vitals. And let's go ahead and do three things here. So first, let's start with the E75s. Those. And then let's do LCP. Do this guy. And then this guy. Bam. There we go. Now we got web vital information. And I'll highlight over that uh, and showcase what that looks like in just a bit. And I have some, I want to know what my slowest transactions are so I can act on it. Uh, in case they're important transactions. This one's going to be a table. And let's just go here. And what I'm interested in is what is the transaction and what is the P95 for the duration? There we go. And let's go ahead and sort that. There we go. So immediately I can see the full store endpoint and the Git tools um, front and back end all in one screen. And I have some key transactions that I care about that I want to track. You might have seen some of them earlier. But bam, the tool store. And let's do a few others as well. This guy. And let's do one of these. Get back at a transaction that I really want to track here. I can label these as necessary. There we go. Add that widget. And then last one. And this one's particularly interesting because I'm going to start with a map. And I want to know about the number of users affected by slow transactions. So what I'm going to do here is create a quick query that if the duration is more than four seconds, I consider that a slow query. So I want to know how many unique users are affected by that. And there we go. As easy as that. So I'm all done here. Looks like we got, you know, 4K unique users on the platform over the last 24 hours. Page loads are as such. Uh, it's taken about five and a half seconds to, to uh, load the experience. And we can highlight over this web vital information or really any query that we make here. We can hop into Discover to view any of these slow transactions. I've listed some key transactions and I wanna know, you know if, if there's slow experiences around the globe and act on that accordingly.